going on YouTube? Um, I just want to talk about a couple things. I want to highlight some changes that I've made in the tank, but I also want to talk about something specific. Um, I want to talk to you guys about territorial aggression in sunfish. Uh, now, if you've watched some of the other videos on this tank that I've got, um, you'll remember that I had this huge piece of driftwood. Uh, it covered probably around two-thirds of the whole tank. It looked really cool, and the fish loved it because it had a huge arch in the middle. Uh, the fish could hide underneath, and they absolutely loved it. Only problem with it, though, was that it wasn't waterlogged, and so I had fishing line uh, wrapped around to it uh, to uh, attach it to some larger rocks underneath to keep it weighed down, and it looked really tacky. Um, I didn't like it, but I thought, you know, after a few months, it would eventually become waterlogged, and I could take the fishing line off. Now, I know that it would have been better just uh, from the very beginning to have attached some pieces of slate to it, um, but I didn't have any at the time, and the landscaping places near me uh, didn't carry it, and the look nearest uh, local fish store was about an hour away and just I just never got around to it so um, anyways I just tied it tied it with fishing line but after a while I got really tired of how bad it looked I uh, just was really really tired of seeing the the fishing line in there so I finally got some slate and when but when I tried to screw it into the bottom of it uh, the wood was so soft it just started to come apart and it just really couldn't uh, get it to to attach very well so um, I lost my patience eventually ended up just throwing it out. Um, now for you aggressive cichlid lovers out there, uh, you guys know that anytime you change things up in a tank, uh, anytime you rescape or you add fish, um, the fish oftentimes have to reestablish those territories that they had originally set up. So once I took that huge piece of driftwood out, the whole setup of the tank changed. Um, and there wasn't really much structure except for that uh, big piece of driftwood on the right. Um, you know, and you know, it's a big piece, but it doesn't really have areas for them to hide underneath and it didn't uh, didn't split up the tank like the other one had. Um, so anyways, that, that piece of driftwood really played a huge role in the territorial, or territorial arrangement that was in the tank. Um, and so I had this green sunfish and um, his territory was in the back, in that back right corner of the tank behind that uh, piece of driftwood that's still there. And so when I took the other driftwood out, the other two dominant long ears who had set up territories on the other side of the tank, uh, they began to fight with the green sunfish uh, and eventually just ended up kicking him out of his territory. So, he goes postal on all the other fish. He becomes super aggressive. Um, he killed a pleco that I put in there, and he almost killed the little bluegill. Uh, so I realized it probably was a good time to take him out. So I took out the green sunfish and uh, the bluegill. Um, I didn't know if the little bluegill was going to make it because it wasn't just the green sunfish picking on him. It was all the other fish were picking on him, and uh, his fins were just about shredded to bits. So anyways, I took those both out, and I placed them in a pond. Um, so anyway, so now I just have the long ears, um, the four creek chubs, and then I've got one bristlenose pleco. I had added three plecos, but the green sunfish killed one, and uh, the, cre uh, the creek chubs actually ended up eating the smallest one. I didn't realize that they could fit the smallest one in their mouth. He was about two inches, but um, managed to do it. So, so anyways, I've only got one left. Only, only the biggest one survived. And I'll talk about him here in a second. But uh, anyways, the point I was trying to make was... Uh, Anytime you change things in your tank when you're keeping sunfish, uh, you disrupt the territories and they oftentimes have to be reestablished. So anytime you add fish or anytime you add or remove decorations, you create the potential for this to happen. And that long ear sunfish, even though they have incredible color, are definitely not a peaceful fish. Um, they can get really aggressive with each other if you don't have enough structure for them to use uh, to establish their, you know, uh, their boundaries. So, uh, so what I ended up doing, I added a piece of driftwood. Um, that I had in my 120 gallon before that when I had it set up. Um, I had to scrub it with a wire brush for a while. Um, it took me a long time to clean it off because it had some black beard algae on it. But uh, I think I got most, if not all of it off. I can't really see any. Um, but uh, anyways, now the fish have to again reestablish the territories they set up. And they're kind of in the process of doing that right now. You can uh, see the dominant ones chasing the smaller ones away from the corners. I think that's where they're going to set up their territories. Um, each one in its own corner. Um, anyways, it'll settle, things will settle down pretty soon and uh, become peaceful again. I think it was a good thing that I took the green sunfish out because uh, he just uh, he just wasn't very uh, friendly, wasn't very uh, um, peaceful. He kind of disrupted things and he was starting to get that way um, even before I took the driftwood out just because the bigger he got, the meaner he got. So. Um, the plecos I added, um, I had added some bristlenose plecos that I had gotten from a breeder. Um, unfortunately, like I said before, the green sunfish killed one and the creek chubs ate the smallest one. Um, so I've got one left and uh, 
I'm hoping things will settle down. He'll be more comfortable moving around the tank. Uh, right now, he just hides uh, behind the sponge filter most of the day. Um, this piece of driftwood I got on the left side, it'll be good for him because uh, underneath, it's really got kind of a cavern um, effect to it. On the underside of it, it's really uh, got some uh, hollow spots where the, the fish can he can get underneath there and hide there during the day and still have plenty of room to move around without being worried to, uh, without having to worry about getting picked on. So uh, I'm hoping he finds that. I see him. I've seen him come out a couple times at night after the the tank lights have come off, and I've seen him uh, wander around the glass. So I'm hoping eventually he'll find that uh, that hiding spot for himself. Um, I think he'll do better in there. But um, as things settle down, the longer he's in there, it seems like the less and less they take notice of him. So um, he should be okay. I think he'll make it. So anyways, back to the original point. If you want to keep sunfish, best to have plenty of structure so they can set up their territories. And when it comes to adding or removing things, um, it's best to add to the setup rather than take it away. If you do take away, make sure there's still plenty of structure in the tank for them to be able to uh, create their territories. So, anyways, that's all I've got. Uh, have a great week, guys. We'll see you later.